wastewater management in urban and industrial areas. Lesson 6. Biological Treatment of Municipal Wastewater In the biological treatment of municipal wastewater, microorganisms consume pollutants in wastewater and convert the pollutants through assimilation and dissimulation during growth and proliferation into inorganic matters or matters with little harm on the environment. The most commonly used biological treatment process is activated sludge process. What is activated sludge process? To learn about the biological treatment process of municipal wastewater, we will examine what activated sludge process, which is the most commonly used, and what roles it plays. In addition, we will learn about the basic design factor and operating factor of activated sludge process. Through this learning, you will be able to understand and apply the biological treatment process of municipal wastewater and activated sludge process. You will also be able to explain the main design and operating factor of activated sludge process. Then let's start our lesson today! 1. Biological Treatment Process in Wastewater Microorganisms maintain life through metabolism and perform decomposition and synthesis of various organic. Microorganisms' metabolism is divided into assimilation, in which they produce their own biomaterials by consuming external matters, and dissimulation, in which they decompose organic compounds that are synthesized inside the body or external matters to produce energy needed for assimilation. The biological treatment of municipal wastewater uses the assimilation and dissimulation of microorganisms to eliminate wastewater pollutants or make them environmentally harmless. In other words, microorganisms intake wastewater pollutants to grow and proliferate through assimilation and dissimulation, and during this process, wastewater pollutants are converted into inorganic matters or turn into matters with little environment harm. Biological treatment has a simple process composition, can treat a large amount of wastewater at a low cost, and has a relatively high treatment efficiency. Also, compared to physical and chemical treatment, they require little facility investment cost and gives relatively low burden on natural environment due to byproducts or little possibility of repollution. Not only biodegradable organic matters in wastewater, but also some non-degradable organic matters can be treated, and nutritive salts such as nitrogen and phosphorus can be eliminated as well. Thus, most municipal wastewater treatment facilities in the world treat wastewater using the biological treatment method. However, there are not only advantages. Its disadvantage is that it costs a lot of power cost to supply oxygen needed for the metabolism of microorganisms. Also, treatment efficiency drops if there are factors hindering microbial activities, such as the inflow of many toxic substances, rapid load increase in organic matters, etc. Microorganisms used in municipal wastewater treatment are, based on the intake characteristics of pollutants, divided into autotrophs and heterotrophs. Here, autotrophs use outside carbon sources, such as carbon dioxide, solar power, inorganic matters, etc., for their growth and proliferation, while heterotrophs use organic carbon for growth and proliferation. Also, depending on whether they need oxygen during the dissimulation process of producing energy, Microorganisms can be divided into aerobic bacteria and anaerobic bacteria. Aerobic bacteria requires oxygen for dissimulation, and richness in oxygen is called aerobic condition. However, anaerobic bacteria can dissimulate without oxygen, and the state of no or little oxygen is called anaerobic condition. Wait a second. Some anaerobic bacteria use matters combined with oxygen, like nitrate, nitrite, sulfate, etc., instead of oxygen. In terms of wastewater treatment, this is called anoxic condition to distinguish it from anaerobic condition. For example, 
aerobic heterotrophs should be applied to remove organic carbon pollutants in waste using microorganisms that need oxygen for treatment. Also, if microorganisms that need oxygen to treat inorganic pollutants are being used, then these microorganisms are aerobic autotrophs. In contrast, if organic carbon pollutants in wastewater are being treated without oxygen supply, then anaerobic heterotrophs are involved. If microorganisms treating organic carbon in wastewater use nitrate instead of oxygen, then this means anaerobic or non-oxygen heterotrophs are active. Depending on the active temperature they prefer, microorganisms can be divided into psychrophilic bacteria, mesophilic bacteria, and thermophilic bacteria. Most microorganisms are mesophilic bacteria, but there are also thermophilic bacteria that can survive near the crater of deep sea or hot spring. Next, pH condition is also an important element for the environment of microbial activities. Most microorganisms grow in an environment of pH values between 6 to 8, but sometimes there are microorganisms that survive in an extremely acidic condition below pH 4 or strongly alkali condition above pH 10. Salt concentration also influences microbial activities. However, too high salt concentration destroys the cell membranes of microorganisms due to osmotic pressure and blocks their survival. Depending on how microorganisms grow during biological wastewater treatment process, the growth can be divided into suspended growth and attached growth process. In suspended growth, pollutant decomposition and microorganisms' growth occur when they are suspended in mixed liquor inside a reactor. To distribute evenly in mixed liquor, microorganisms are mixed through stirring or aeration, etc. Typical treatment processes using suspended growth include conventional activated sludge process, oxidation ditch, and anaerobic digestion. Attached growth means microorganisms are not suspended but rather intake wastewater pollutants and grow while they are attached to filter or media. Attached growth induces microorganisms to form biofilms by attaching to solid surface, such as filter or media, and treats wastewater by immersing or suspending this filter or media inside the reactor. Main examples include trickling filter, rotating biological contactor, packed bed reactor, fluidized bed reactor, and anaerobic biofilm. The treatment process can also be divided according to respiratory characteristics of microorganisms, aerobic treatment and anaerobic treatment process. Aerobic treatment uses oxygen for dissimulation of microorganisms to produce energy by decomposing pollutants. Conventional activated sludge process, trickling filter, rotating biological contactor, fluidized bed process, etc. are biological treatment methods. In aerobic treatment, organic pollutant matters are decomposed and converted into carbon dioxide and water, so there is no problem in discharging treated water into natural river or lake. Also, since aerobic microorganisms grow and remove pollutants very fast, they can treat a huge amount of wastewater in a short period. However, Oxygen needed for aerobic respiration must be continuously supplied, which consumes energy cost. Also, wastewater containing a high concentration of pollutants, such as industrial wastewater or livestock wastewater, needs a huge supply of oxygen and has low efficiency of oxygen consumption, making aerobic treatment difficult. Therefore, Aerobic treatment is applied to municipal wastewater treatment that contains low concentration of pollutants compared to high concentration of pollutants in wastewater. Anaerobic treatment does not need oxygen for microorganisms to dissimulate and can be divided into anaerobic respiration and fermentation. Common treatment methods are anaerobic digestion, septic tank, fermentator, anaerobic biofilm, etc. Since anaerobic treatment does not need aeration for oxygen supply, its energy cost is cheaper than that of aerobic treatment process, and methane gas is produced as the final output depending on the method, enabling energy to be recollected.
Also, it produces little wasted sludge production. Since organic matters, other than inorganic matters such as carbon dioxide and water, are produced as byproducts for final treated outputs, they cannot be discharged to river or lake. In addition, anaerobic bacteria grow and decompose pollutants slowly, so they take a long time to treat wastewater. Also, since they grow high concentration of microorganisms in a reactor, it is difficult to divide treated water and sludge with gravity sedimentation process. Moreover, this treatment process causes much worse smell than aerobic treatment and cannot biologically eliminate nitrogen and phosphorus. Thus, anaerobic treatment is not used much for municipal wastewater and is used to treat high concentration of wastewater or wasted sludge from municipal wastewater treatment. However, due to the advantage that there is little energy consumption, there have been active attempts to apply anaerobic treatment in municipal wastewater treatment. The most common research is on producing new and renewable energy from municipal wastewater, collecting useful resources such as nitrogen, phosphorus, and rare metals, or producing biofuel using organic byproducts, etc., to enable them during wastewater treatment. Pop quiz. Please read the following question and select O if it is correct and X if it is wrong. Two, activated sludge process. The treatment of municipal wastewater using activated sludge is conventional activated sludge process, which requires aeration for oxygen supply. Thus, microorganisms involved are aerobic bacteria. The basic activated sludge process consists of three basic elements. First is bioreactor, in which aeration occurs for oxygen supply and microorganisms are in a suspended state. Second is sedimentation, to separate activated sludge and treated water. Third is sludge recycled to recycled sludge sunk in sedimentation to the bioreactor. The most fundamental activated sludge process is conventional activated sludge process consisting only of three basic elements. Numerous activated sludge processes developed so far are changes from the conventional activated sludge process in different forms according to its biological function, reactor form, operating method, sludge recycle method, etc. Conventional activated sludge process is the secondary treatment applied after wastewater completes preliminary and primary treatment. It is combined with chemical, physical post processes including filtering, disinfection, and cohesion. Wait a second. Let's learn about the advantages and disadvantages of conventional activated sludge process. It is relatively easy to operate, has good treatment efficiency, and fast speed, and is easy to treat a huge amount of municipal wastewater. However, it generates a lot of wasted sludge, sensitive to biological factors, and a lot of energy is consumed to supply oxygen. In the bioreactor of activated sludge processed, dissolved, colloidal, and particulate suspended organic matters are biologically eliminated. Depending on their operating condition, method, reaction process, etc. Also, nitrogen and phosphorus can be eliminated through nitrification, denitrification, phosphorus release, and phosphorus uptake, etc. While wastewater pollutants are treated, microorganisms grow and proliferate. Accordingly, the amount of activated sludge gradually increases. Thus, to maintain a certain concentration of activated sludge in the bioreactor, excess sludge is eliminated and discharged outside the system. This is called wasted sludge. Wasted sludge can be treated through anaerobic digestion, explained previously. After anaerobic digestion, it goes through concentration and dewatering and the final solid matters are recycled as soil conditioner, seed covering soil agent for filled land, 
soil seed spray, etc. Or it is buried in a sanitation landfill or combusted in an incinerator. Through a dry plant, wasted sludge with water eliminated is supplied as a fuel source of a thermal power plant. When oxygen is supplied to municipal wastewater that contains a lot of organic carbon pollutants through aeration, it promotes the growth and proliferation of aerobic microorganisms. Here, hundreds and thousands of various aerobic microorganisms use suspended matters, colloid, and dissolved pollutants in wastewater for metabolism to proliferate and secrete extracellular polymeric substances at the same time. Such metabolism outputs act as a kind of adhesive to help individual microorganisms to touch and stick with each other to form a colony, and such colony in wastewater treatments are called flock. The mixed liquor in which many flocks and mathers not treated by microorganisms are mixed is called activated sludge in terms of wastewater treatment. This refers to an aggregate of all kinds of microorganisms, organic matters, particulate matters, and colloidal matters. It is not just sludge of solid lumps, but living microorganisms exist in it, so it is called activated. Activated sludge has excellent capacities for the oxidative degradation of organic matters and absorption of various matters and it is bigger than water with a proportion of 1.2 to 1.4, so it has an excellent sedimentation property. Therefore, it is possible to separate treated water and activated sludge by gravity sedimentation process, such as final sedimentation. Also, after activated sludge is used for wastewater treatment, it is converted into methane gas through anaerobic digestion, or becomes solid fuel through pyrolysis, so it can be used as a source of new and renewable energy. In addition, useful resources contained in activated sludge are also recollected. Recently, to emphasize the new and renewable energy of activated sludge or the use of waste resources, it is also called biomass. Activated sludge contains microbial colonies in which various bacteria, archaea, protozoa, fungi, and algae are mixed, and these all play a role in decomposing wastewater pollutants and all kinds of organic matters. 3. Main Design and Operating Factors of Activated Sludge Process now we are going to learn about the design and related details of activated sludge process. The microbial concentration inside the aeration tank sludge uses mixed liquor suspended solids concentration as an indirect index of solids concentration. However, since MLSS is a concentration containing particulate matters and all kinds of inorganic matters, not microorganisms, it is much more reasonable to use mixed liquor volatile suspended solids concentration as an indirect index of microbial concentration. In general, the MLVSS MLSS proportion of good sludge is around 60 to 80 percent. But since MLVSS also includes all living as well as dead microorganisms that did not pass filter, so not only living microorganisms but also dead microorganisms, Microorganism producing metabolites of extracellular polymeric substances and volatile matters that flew in with wastewater are also included. In a general suspended activated sludge process, the MLSS concentration inside an aeration tank is 1,200 to 4,000 milligrams per liter, and an appropriate concentration of recycled sludge is 4,000 to 12,000 milligrams per liter. Hydraulic retention time means the average time that wastewater inflow stays in a reactor, and the time can be calculated using the calculation method on the screen. If the time is enough for pollutants to be degraded by microbial metabolism in a bioreactor, it is seen as an appropriate HRT. But if HRT is too short, pollutants are not eliminated. And if it is too short, microorganisms lack nutrients and the treated water quality rather deteriorates. 
FM is expressed by the ratio of wastewater pollutants compared to microorganisms in a bioreactor. It is one of the most important operating factors in a biological post-process and is calculated as in the suggested formula. A proper adjustment of FM increases pollutant treatment efficiency, improves sludge sinking property, prevents the excessive generation of wasted sludge, and prevents abnormal microbial growth. Also, adequate FM ratio forms microbial flocks well and sinks sludge fast, so relatively low turbidity of treated water can be obtained. However, if FM ratio is too high, microorganisms do not form flocks, but rather disperse them, proliferating in a suspended state. Since the proportion of dispersed microorganisms is lower than that of water, and it is difficult for them to sink, a lot of sludge can be contained in treated supernatant and turbid water can be discharged. If FM ratio is too high, activated sludge cannot sink due to the proliferation of filamentous bacteria, sludge foaming, and formation of pin flock, etc. And sludge bulking occurs and disperses throughout all depth of sedimentation. Adequate FM ratio varies depending on the amount and characteristics of wastewater inflow. But the general activated sludge process is designed in the range of 0.2 grams to 0.5 grams of BOD per 1 gram of VSS for each day. Sludge retention time means the retention time that activated sludge stays within a system. Its value is obtained by dividing the amount of solid matters in an aeration tank by the entire solid matters discharged outside the system. For example, if SRT is 5 days, the activated sludge stays within the system for 5 days and is discharged outside the system on the 6th day and disposed. Also, for activated sludge process to operate in a steady state, the same amount of sludge as the sludge disposed after 5 days must be produced for 5 days. If sludge retention time is short, it is not a huge problem for the elimination of carbon organic pollutants due to heterotrophs, but the proliferation of nitrate microorganisms, which are autotrophs, is not enough, so biological ammonia oxidation may not happen, and a lot of wasted sludge may be generated. In contrast, if sludge retention time is long, nitrification happens enough, and wasted sludge generation is reduced. But microbial concentration increases too much and FM ratio becomes too low, which may worsen the sludge sinking property. Thus, the adequate SRT range for general conventional activated sludge is between 5 to 15 days. Wait a second. In terms of sludge as an aggregate of all solid matters, including microorganisms, Sludge retention time is also called solids retention time. Also, the time that living microorganisms, excluding all non-microbial solid matters, stays in the system is called mean cell residence time. In a normal state, if there is no change in the TVS to TS ratio of wastewater inflow, MLVSS-MLSS ratio in sludge, and the ratio of living and dead microorganisms in MLVSS, and if there are no microorganisms of the same type as activated sludge in wastewater inflow, sludge retention time, solids retention time, and mean cell residence time are all theoretically the same. Sludge volume index is an index that shows the sedimentation property of activated sludge and expresses the degree of sinking property when activated sludge is fixed for 30 minutes. It is calculated by measuring the volume taken after 1 gram of activated sludge sediments for 30 minutes. If the sinking property is good, SVI value is less than 100 milliliters per gram, and the SVI value of 200 milliliters per gram or higher may indicate sludge bulking. For example, if the volume of sludge that sunk after 3,000 mg TSS per liter concentration of activated sludge was filled in a 1 liter mass cylinder and was fixed for 30 minutes, then SVI can be calculated as 100 milliliters per gram. 
Activated sludge process can be divided into completely mixed suspended growth, plug flow, and sequencing batch reactor depending on wastewater inflow and aeration. In completely mixed suspended growth, wastewater generated after primary sedimentation is completely mixed with recycled sludge in an aeration tank. Then it is aerated for 5 to 24 hours, so that in a reactor, the concentration of organic matters and microorganisms are distributed evenly in terms of space. Thus, this method enables the rate of oxygen use to be consistent regardless of reactor location. After an adequate amount of retention time passes, the mixed liquor inside the reactor is transferred to secondary sedimentation. The sludge is sedimented for 2 to 5 hours in the secondary sedimentation, and some of the sedimented sludge is returned to the aeration tank as recycled sludge, and the rest is sent to sludge treatment plant as wasted sludge. Plug flow is also called pipe flow method. Wastewater that went through sludge recycle and primary sedimentation is mixed in the entrance of aeration tank and flows in. To induce plug flow, a reactor has a narrow, long passageway and does not mix anymore while the mixed liquor travels toward the flow direction. Thus, the concentration of pollutants and dissolved oxygen varies depending on the direction and distance. Sequencing batch reactor makes municipal wastewater flow into a single bioreactor containing activated sludge and induces biological reaction at a consistent time and cycle. There is no additional inflow of wastewater until one cycle of reaction occurs, and in general, one cycle consists of reaction at wastewater injection, sedimentation, discharge of treated water and the rest, and discharge of wasted sludge. Such sequencing batch reactor can adjust the reaction time according to the amount of wastewater pollutants flowing in and does not need separate sedimentation basin and thus little site area. However, wastewater is not injected continuously, so there are limits to treating a large amount of wastewater, so it is mainly used to treat small or medium size of wastewater. Quiz. Let's check what we've learned through a quiz. Three questions will be given, and you will have two chances. Then let's start. Let's review and summarize what we've learned so far. We learned about the biological treatment of municipal wastewater this time. This is the end of our lecture. Thank you very much for your hard work.